trying out a Unix PC motherboard today uh, with some various components from other Unix PCs. Now, this motherboard should be the 3B1. Um, it came with the uh, full height hard drive underneath the monitor, as well as the uh, 67 megabyte badge right here on the front cover. And those are usually uh, indicators of the 3B1. Uh, I don't actually have the tall uh, top cover, which accommodates the large hard drive underneath the monitor to show you, but I do have the full height hard drive, which would have mounted like this, right about here. So there's that. And I'm not sure what model this was, but we can get to that later. Not going to be using this today. It's one too many unknowns. Instead, we're going to be using the, um, the SD506 uh, MFM emulator. Uh, this is a version 1 board made by David Gesswein. And uh, this does have a Unix PC image loaded onto it that I've used uh, fairly regularly over the last year or so, so I fully expect it to actually work. Um, <clears throat> earlier when I powered this on, I did actually get uh, the marching boxes here as well as the, uh, as well as the four LED status lights here. I have some various other videos on that. Um, what we're doing right here is we're actually using the keyboard from another uh, working Unix PC. I had this one powered up just last night. It works just fine. Actually, just a few minutes ago. And I'm actually going to be using the monitor for this. So I've unplugged I've unplugged the cable that goes from this Unix PC to this monitor right here. And instead, I'm using the monitor that goes from this motherboard Unix PC right over to this monitor. Now, the monitor is powered by this cable on 12 volts, so we shouldn't need any power on this Unix PC in order for this one to actually work. And I've already uh, seen this. The only addition that I've made now on video is, uh, is I've actually added a boot device, which would be the emulated hard drive. So, I think we are ready to power on. Now, uh, ideally I'd be using a modern ATX power supply that's modified to this, but evidently <clears throat> somebody had fixed this for me. I don't know who or what they did, but I'd love to know. And so I am fairly precariously holding that off to the side. Um, have that connected to a 110 volt uh, plug right here, which is, would be very dangerous to touch, so I'm not going to. Uh, I'm just going to stay away, but I have the other end that I'm just ready to plug in. So if there's any sparks, you get to watch them here, but I am not anticipating any. Let's adjust this for minimum glare. That's pretty good right there. All right, let's see what we have here. We're ready for the magic. Here we go. There's no hard drives and no fans. So there's really not a lot of sound. But I do see all four LEDs lit up here. And here we see the marching boxes. And soon the hard drive should boot up. If not, I can hit the reset button on the BeagleBone Black to make it do so. That would be the only thing that I think would be necessary to get it to boot. I can tell right now by looking at the lights on the BeagleBone Black that it has uh, the BeagleBone Black has not booted for reasons I do not know, but every once in a while it fails to do so. So let's see here. I'm just going to hit the reset button, which I think is right here. Yep, there it is. There it is. So the BeagleBone Black is booting. This usually takes less than a minute in order for it to start to run the MFM emulator hard drive program. And so I'm expecting a bootloader here any second now. And there we go. It is booting from hard drive. The emulated hard drive right here. Look at this. It's searching the hard disk as it should because there it is. And uh, looks like it runs just fine. We'll be testing keyboard here shortly. There we go. Real memory 2097152. Available memory 17571184. Uh, P3 to P5. Main board is P3 to P5. Version 3.51. Of course, I knew the version is 3.51 because that's the software that I had installed on that hard drive. Excellent. This is excellent.
and we will just watch the silent magic. I've actually never heard a Unix PC be this quiet because um, in all the other ones I at least have um, a fan installed. Here I haven't even installed a fan. It's just out in the open. But I'm not too worried about overheating because, well, the only thing that's going to produce any heat is this. And I would say it's fairly well ventilated. And nothing smoking yet, so that's a good sign. Loading drivers! I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the screen will now be set up. I will definitely stand by. We even have sound. And there we go. Thank you for welcoming me to the AT&T Unix PC. I will log in. Very nice and everything is as I expect it to be. I believe... Nope. That's what I want. And instead, I'm going to log in as install, and we'll actually see the GUI user interface. Now, I didn't plug in the mouse, but I have no reason to believe that the mouse doesn't work because it runs through the keyboard user interface. I could have plugged in the mouse, I suppose, but I just didn't. So instead, I'm left to use the arrow keys and the menu keys here. But um, I, I expect this to behave exactly as uh, exactly as it did in the previous Unix PC that I had uh, running this on, which was a regular Unix PC, not a 3B1. Uh, so maybe the difference that I could notice is if I go to system information, it might tell me a little bit about the hardware there. There we go. All right, system name is Unix PC, as I expected, because that's the install that I have. Version 3.51, also what I expected. Three uh, f uh, f Disk space free, also what I expect, because that's what I configured that thing to be. Um, all of this, all of this, all of this. Memory, okay, 2048K. So I really should see what... Uh, what the memory was um, when I do this on uh, just a regular Unix PC that doesn't have all of this built-in memory here. Um, I did, the one I last tested it on, I did have a memory expansion board plugged in the back. But, uh, eh, we'll check on that. We will see. The users logged on, install, software installed. Yes, these are all the things that I installed on that particular build. So, uh oh, let's see, how do we escape? Exit, we have pushed the exit button, that's how we escape. Date and time. Anyway, it clearly works. It definitely clearly works. I believe, let's see, there's, a, if I open the command window from right here, I should be enabled to initiate the shutdown, and I can. The shutdown from menu, right there. And we'll just shut the thing down. Oh yes, I wish to shut down. Absolutely, I wish to shut down. In all of your, in all of your silence. Very silent. All right. That was pretty quick. One of the faster shutdowns I've seen. So... I guess I'll pull the plug now and call that a successful test. Thanks for watching.